An irregular heartbeat can lead to serious health issues. Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, the chief medical officer of Pfizer, is back. And we're having a heart to heart about something called atrial fibrillation. You know, it's estimated that nearly 3 million Americans experience atrial fibrillation. Sometimes we call it AFib. And it is the most common form of atypical or abnormal heart rhythms. It can affect anyone, as you know, but it can affect men a little bit more than women, whites a little bit more than African Americans and Hispanics. But the really important thing to remember are the potential conditions that AFib can cause, like stroke. Absolutely. And Part of AFib, you understand that a healthy heart is normally going to be 60, up to 100 times per minute. We'd ideally like it more towards that 60 range, but with atrial fibrillation, your heart's electrical signals become irregular. It forces your heart to work harder. In some cases, it may be much faster than normal, 150 times per minute or more in case, certain cases. Exactly. The American Heart Association says, look out between 100 and 175 beats per minute. And some people experience symptoms. They have heart palpitations, shortness of breath, chest pain, fatigue, or dizziness. But some people have no symptoms at all. And that's why so many people with atrial fibrillation go undiagnosed. And diagnosis can be as simple as seeing your doctor. Mm -hmm. I've diagnosed it many times with this. Good old fashioned stethoscope. So let's explain really quickly what happens when we're talking about atrial fibrillation. It really does start with your heart's electrical wiring. So very quickly, little anatomy. You have two atria. These are the upper chambers of your heart. And you have two ventricles. These are the lower chambers. Now, normally, when everything's working pro appropriately, you have normally beating atria that push blood into the ventricles. Your right atrium receives unoxygenated blood from your body, pumps it into your right ventricle, which then goes to your lungs, comes back to your left atria and your left ventricle, that thing goes out to your body. But here's the deal. When atrial fibrillation occurs, literally, the, your atria fibrillate. They quiver. And what happens is, not only are you not getting good, nice blood flow into the ventricle, what can happen over time is you can actually get a blood clot that forms in the atria because of the atrial fibrillation. When that happens, when that blood clot forms, it puts you at a greatly increased risk of getting a stroke because that clot can then spread through your arterial system and land in your brain. Yes, and unfortunately, people with atrial fibrillation can have a five times higher risk of having a stroke. And let's take a look what happens. So if you take a look at that um, artery and that clot that you showed in the brain, here's essentially what happens. You count on smooth blood flow with um, blood carrying oxygen and important nutrients into the brain. What the clot does is cut that off. So the brain cells further down in your brain don't get the oxygen or the nutrients that they need and they die. The other thing that can happen is this clot blocks off the vessel and causes the vessel to rupture. That's another way in which the stroke can happen. And the thing people need to realize is that AFib-related strokes do often lead to severe disability, even death. You know, the clot is more likely to result in a blockage of a major brain blood vessel. And the bigger the vessel that's blocked, the more oxygen deprivation to the brain. But the good news is this. AFib can actually be discovered, as I mentioned, during just a regular old medical checkup. And there are treatments for AFib that can include medications to control your heart rate and rhythm or medications to reduce, of course, the formation of blood clots, or even a cardiac ablation procedure may help correct any structural problems in the heart that may be leading to your atrial fibrillation or other rhythm abnormalities. If you have atrial fibrillation, there are two things that you should keep in mind. The first is don't overuse caffeine. And the second is if you smoke, stop. Why? Because those two things can push your heart rate up and can make your atrial fibrillation worse. And if you want more information about atrial fibrillation, go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. And you can also visit the doctorstv.com for additional information. Dr. Fee Lewis Hall, always a pleasure. Love it. Sit down, we'll be right back.